hello and welcome back to Film Asterisk. Uh, it's been a minute since we did some Film Asterisk, but I thought I would come on here and do a, a tier list. Not one that's a film and tier list, but closer to the Film Asterisk ones we've done in the past with Connor and Steve. But this week, uh, we're kind of having a fun week here at Film and in celebration, February 22nd, Tuesday, which is 2-22-22, and it's on a Tuesday. I thought I would institute a little thing called Sequel Week, where we just talk about sequels. So I have here a, a tier list of sequels that we can just talk about. 22, actually. 22 sequels that I will just be putting in this tier list here, as we've done before. So, yeah, let's get into it to, to this Tuesday 2-22-22 tier list. First up, we got, ooh, Too Fast, Too Furious. This is obviously the sequel to The Fast and the Furious, which I talked about on a previous tier list back in November. Um, when it comes to sequels, this one, it's wrong. this one's not bad. I would put this as a pretty, is a good boy. I would say it's a pretty good sequel, considering, you know, where the franchise goes and trying to recapture sort of the energy of the original Fast and the Furious without copying it, you know, without just being, like, copy-paste. And that's something you want to see in a sequel. You don't just want to watch the exact same thing, you know? I think some of the best sequels are the ones that expand or do something different. So, yeah, I find I find this a pretty fun, cool sequel. Next up, uh, oh, Spider-Man 2. I used to say I'm not a big fan of the, the Spider-Men movies in general. Uh, Sam Raimi. Uh, I love the guy, but not a fan of the trilogy. You know, I didn't grow up with it. Uh, I didn't watch it when I was younger, so I probably have to give this an average boy. I mean, when it comes to just sequels, no, I think I think it's a really good sequel to the first one. But overall, I still think it still has, like, story issues. And overall, I, I find myself not caring as much. I'm sorry. I know, I know that's very close to a lot of people's halts, but average boy. Next up. Oh, Superman 2, another superhero movie. I mean, a lot of superhero movies these days have sequels, and this was one of the first ones to ever do it, way back in the 70s. Again, I'd say another average sequel. I feel like we get a bit of a second helping of what we got in the first Superman movie, but without too much of the same. It's a little hokey at times without, like, that original unique camp that the first Superman movie is able to capture. And this one just feels a bit more... I, get, I mean, even with like Gene Hackman and General Zod, and the you know those characters, everybody, Lex Luthor, that's Gene Hackman in that movie. It just it feels a bit hokey at times and campy, and not in the best way that any superhero movie should be sometimes. So average boy, <laughs> Ice Age: The Meltdown. I talked about this on my animated tier list. This is one of my favorite sequels because I think it outdoes um, the original Ice Age. So I'm going to put this really, really good boy. When it comes to being a sequel, it's not, like, groundbreaking, <laughs> it's, you know, but it's fun. It's much more enjoyable. You get to know a bit more about the characters. Uh, and, you know, I, I would say the original Ice Age is kind of a unique story. But this one is this – is, this is the one I grew up on. This is the one I've come back to. Um, it looks pretty cool. I do love the visuals. And the story itself – of, like, them living in this valley and discovering that there's going to be this giant flood. Um, and there's kind of this impending thing that's just really it's really cool. There's a very obvious end goal to it and a finale, and they add a bunch of cool other characters. And Scrat, my friend, <laughs> he's, the, he's back. He's wanting that acorn. Next up, The Two Towers. Now, here's something I did. I did want to mention this, and I forgot to mention it at first. I only picked sequels that have the number two in them, all right? So sorry for all you people who are expecting to see The Dark Knight as one of these 22, because I don't know, if Chris Nolan wanted it on this list, he should have put Batman 2, The Dark Knight. <laughs> but there's not, there's not a number two, so doesn't get a mention. Sorry, Connor. The Two Towers, the second installment of Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy, um, I would say... Really, really good boy. 
I'll be honest, my least favorite of the trilogy. I actually think Fellowship's my favorite, weird enough. And Return of the King's probably my second in Two Towers. It's kind of an issue you have with, like, a lot of second installments. And not second installments, but more, like, penultimate installments. It's not just that this is the second one, it's the second to last one. And it does kind of falter from that Infinity War problem, where Infinity War wasn't a movie. It was a setup for a movie. It was the first half of a movie. It was the down, and then we get the up. And Two Towers is kind of the same. Um, it's just more of the journey. It's the middle chapter, and not much gets resolved sometimes. And it's just like, there's less payoff, and it's fun to watch, but only in the context of getting the next one. So it's really good. Obviously, it would I think it'd be perfect if it wasn't that, just for the visuals and how forward-thinking it was, how beautiful, how fun. Yeah, it just barely misses the perfect boy <laughs> tier. Don't breathe too. Don't breathe. The sec I didn't even see the first one. <laughs> I, I only watched the second one randomly this summer. And I'll say it's not so good. It's not great. I haven't seen the first one, so I don't really get to say anything on that. But I didn't like it that much. Um, it wasn't terrible. It had some cool visuals. I didn't like some of the themes... Uh, some of the messages came off a bit foggy with having the protagonist, having the main or well, antagonist protagonist be a bit of a redeemable character I didn't really get on board with. But it sounded like the first one was a much grittier, interesting horror movie. So this one just kind of didn't really stack up in any way, especially with the other movies I, uh, in the horror genre I was seeing that summer. Old, as an example. Another one from this summer, Quiet Place Part 2. Um, yeah, it could be... Uh, uh, it's, it's good. It's, uh, it's average. I, I'll put it as average, boy. Um, mostly because, again, I still haven't seen the first Quiet Place. I feel like I've seen so many sequels of these, and I haven't seen the, the, the original. Um, these are probably the only two, though. These are probably the only two where that happens, I think. Um, but no, essentially, this is, this is another issue. If I haven't seen the first one... But I do like how this one stands up on its own. It's got some really cool audio tricks. Some uh, The story's pretty interesting. Uh, the visuals hold up. But overall, it's just not for me, you know, um, as I've kind of let it age. I saw it 10 months ago. So as I've let it sit in my mind, yeah, it's, it's kind of I can take or leave it. So average boy. Uh, but Killian Murphy was great in it. Okay. Next. Oh, next up. D2, The Mighty Ducks. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> Another one I grew up on. Um, I think easily surpassing the first movie, especially for just character arcs in a sense. You get like that kind of really campy, cheesy, all these kids don't care about hockey and the coach is trying to get them to care about hockey and then he opens up and then they care about hockey and I think they win something. I, I don't know. This one is kind of a cool sequel to that as you get all the characters again and you get some new ones and it's really interesting because I really feel like this film, like a lot of good sequels should be, especially for like family-friendly, youth-oriented, like kid actor movies, it grows up with its audience. These kids are now preteens or teenagers, and I think the tone of the movie and the story just goes along well with that. They're not trying to appeal to those middle schoolers anymore who are just barely care about hockey, you know, just being goofs. There's, there's a bit more of a seriousness to it. Uh, I mentioned this last week on my Olympic episode. Totally watch it. Junior Goodwill Games. Olympics. Yeah. Really, really good. It's I remember being really fun, a cool example of those kind of family-friendly 90s movies. Next up. Back to the Future Pulp 2. Oh, man. Oh no! This is, this is terrible. Um, no, this is one of my least favorite movies I've ever seen. Um, I, I never want to watch it again, and I I say that rarely. You know, um, I just actually watched Contempt a couple weeks ago by Jean Luc Godard, and I hated it. But I would watch it again. This the movies, this very small amount of movies I've seen, like Back to the Future Part 2, that it lands in this very special category where I never want to see it again. I uh, I hated it so much. It's terrible. And it's, it's, it's the story, and it's how also I feel so betrayed. I mean, Part 3 is fine. I like it enough. It's got ZZ Top in it. 
But no, it, it just, you know, you take this really unique, interesting, fun 80s movie, Back to the Future, abs- an absolute classic, you know? I mean, you can't, you can't beat that one. That's one of the best of those, like, family 80s movies out there that is a cool concept, and it just pulls it off so well, and the performances are great. It's just so fun. And the second one feels like a really just bizarre rehashing. I don't like the visuals at all. I don't like the story. It it treads on the coattails of the original to the point where it almost makes me like the original less, which I try and keep that out of my mind when I have to watch Pulp 2. But yeah, no, I just, man, this thing just really rubbed me the wrong way, and it's sad, but them's the breaks. Sorry to those who like that one. Toy Story 2. Yeah, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Really, really good boy. This is my favorite of the Toy Story movies. I love how they expand the universe. I like how they expand the characters. I like how they add the new characters. Jesse's awesome. Sir, uh, oh my goodness, Pete. Oh my goodness, the uh, Prospector Pete. Oh, Dirty Pete, I think. Anyways, I, lo- I love them all. They're great. They're fun. Uh, the visuals are a bit updated as well for the animation. It does it a bit better. So, yeah, really, really good. I love this one. Uh, and you might notice we're about to reach the halfway point of this tier list. And there, there aren't any perfect boys yet. And I think maybe that's just me, but there's something that's so hard to capture with a sequel. It is so hard to get a perfect boy with a sequel because there's always the idea of you have the you have the first one to compare it to. It's always the next one. And if you didn't plan it, I mean, so many sequels, especially these days, all like semi-planned. But back in the day, back in this midsection, like after sequels became a thing, before the current phase of sequels, you, you didn't always get a sequel. A movie would be successful and then be like, let's make another one right now. Let's just do it, get more money out of this. We don't have to come up with anything original. It's kind of lazy, but you know, I mean, if we have the same crew, we have the same actors, maybe we can just get more money out of it. Maybe we can do it again, recreate the magic. And it's hard. It's really hard to do. So it's so much better when you have a second part planned or when you have someone who's engaged enough to say, hey, let's turn this into its own thing. And if there's one movie out of all of these that comes very close to being a perfect boy but isn't, it's this next movie that I'm going to pull up here. Godfather Part 2. I watched this for the first time today, and I, I loved it. It was amazing. Almost an improvement on the first one. You know, the first one's fine. It's a classic. Um, not my favorite of Coppola's work or uh, it's just 70s cinema in general. But wow, what a great sequel. What a great continuation of the story. And like one of it's one of the first sequels, the, one of the first major ones in like cinema history that really like blew everyone's expectations out of the water in a sense. At, at least that's how it feels because it's it's a sequel and a prequel. <laughs> Part 2 goes before and after the events of the original Godfather movie. And it does it so effectively and so gracefully. You feel like you have these reflections of Michael Corleone, Al Pacino, thinking of what his father, always thinking of what what would his father do in these situations? What would he have done? Not just living, not really living in the shadow, but wishing he, he had someone to confide in now that he's the leader of the family. And us seeing his up, like Robert De Niro, who plays a young Marlon Brando back in like the 19... 19- 10s, 1920s, we get to see him grow up and how he becomes Don Corleone. And then we're watching Al Pacino do the same thing. And it's just so interesting because I love how the movie shows, wow, how things have changed. You know, you're in a completely different setting and it's much more like distanced and brittle. And there's less of a family feeling because the family has kind of been dissolving over these years. And it captures that so well. Oh, it's amazing. Almost nearly a perfect boy when it comes to sequels. Um, but yeah, okay. We're halfway through. We, we're getting through it. Here we go. Number 12. Number 1, 2 on this 2, 22, 22 tier list. <laughs> um, we got Kissing Booth 2. Eh, yeah, I might get some flack for this. Uh, it's good. It's, 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 uh, it's not great. I mean, the whole Kissing Booth franchise has got some issues. But boy, there's something about that second one. 
if we're putting away, I mean, this is very biased to me because I just gave like every film you see in the average boys category right now, those three, I like them all more than Kissing Booth 2. But Kissing Booth 2, just as a sequel, I'd say is a better sequel because I like it more than the first Kissing Booth. I think they, they ramp up the ridiculousness a bit. The friendship of the main two characters, Joey King and the, the other kid, they, they're great. They're great together. That gets me through it. I love kind of the weird love square that's going on. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. Well, it's not fantastic, but you know, it's, it's good. How to Train Your Dragon 2. Yeah, my favorite How to Train Your Dragon movie. Good boy. I feel like I don't need to talk too much about that. Uh, especially, I, I feel like I don't need to talk too much about the animated ones because we have an animated tier list here on the channel. Uh, but yeah, no, this is, this is my favorite How to Train Your Dragon movie, which is cool that I can say a lot of these are my favorite of like the franchise, if there is one, like Ice Age 2, Toy Story 2, How to Train Your Dragon 2. Kind of shows that sequels can be the best sometimes, which is which is cool. I like that. It's almost like if a, if a, the first movie experiments and the second movie perfects. I mean, that's what you want out of a sequel, really. I like the story. Um, it expands the world just enough for me to be like, that. There it is. That was that was cool. Thanks for showing me more dragons. Okay. Next up, Star Trek Two, Ep Episode Two, Paul. The Wrath of Khan. <laughs> it has a two in it, so it counts. Yeah, really, really good boy. Um, I would I would just put it in good boy as a, as a good boy. But honestly, again, this is part of me saying as far as sequels go, this one is great. I think it improves way more off of the original Star Trek, the motion picture, a lot by just making it feel like a sort of full-length version or like a double-length episode of Star Trek, the original series. Like, I think it does it so well. It's just a story. It's just like, it's like a double-length episode of Star Trek. And the original Star Trek episodes were like 50 minutes. So it, it's literally double-length episode length. Yeah, oh, fantastic. William Shatner kills it. Khan and the whole story of Khan and how that um, extends. Fantastic. And uh, if you haven't seen The Wrath of Khan, I will not spoil it. But the ending is amazing. <laughs> you know, it, it gets me, you know? So, hell yeah to Rathacon. Frozen 2. I'm going to put a Average Boy. Again, I'm not a big fan of the Frozens, but for Frozen 2, I, I do I do think it's a very average, all right, continuation of the first Frozen. And it looks great. So, heck yeah, why not? Average Boy. Um, next up, Deadpool 2. You know, <laughs> when it comes to Deadpool, I, I had pretty I had a pretty high ball going into the second one. I liked watching the first one. It was funny. It was, I'd say, Ryan Reynolds at his most palatable. I think he didn't really change his comedy style, and I was never really a fan of his comedy style. And it's like, whether that's a rom-com or just a straight-up, like, free guy comedy, I never really liked it. It never really came off good, but Deadpool just feels so right. It's like that's the one place it works for me, like within that context and playing around with what you get to play around with in the X-Men universe. That's really cool. So the sequel, I was kind of like, ah, is it really going to is it really gonna be able to meet those expectations? And I think it did. I, I think it did. I give it a good boy. Um, again, do I come back to those movies a lot? Not really. But I can still respect that it was a, it's a cool story. I like the story structure and the characters. Um, it never takes itself too seriously, but is never like in your face about taking itself not seriously. Next up, now this, I don't know about this one, but it has a number two in it, so it's clearly a sequel. Evil Dead 2. I watched this an hour ago for the first time. I, I'm fresh off watching Evil Dead 2 um, just because I needed a 20 second <laughs> movie for this tier list. I'd give it, yeah, I'd give it a good boy. It's, it's a good it's a good old boy. I think it's not easy to do what it did because it's it's not a sequel. It's a remake, really. It's a remake, and then it has its own sequel. Um, and I I think I I do prefer the first Evil Dead way more to this one, but it still has some really fun moments. 
it's so crazy and it's it's so goofy but like Sam Raimi again this is another Sam Raimi film this is this is Sam Raimi and his just control of practical effects and creative cinematography that made Evil Dead amazing it's still here if anything he's just like this is what I would do with this movie on a bigger budget it's it's like just oh yeah this is what I would have done so that works really well I love that Shrek 2 really good really good boy it's a really really good boy it's it somehow kind of stacks up to the first one which i think is a very tall older and the needle drops you know the songs they use they aren't as iconic as the first but they have the possibility to be just as iconic and they're used really well so heck yeah really really good boy next up kill bill volume two <sighs> boy i see that's tough that's tough because like you know it's not supposed to be a sequel you know, Tarantino wanted it to be one movie, and he released it as Kill Bill, The Whole Bloody Affair. But I really do take those as two separate movies because the second movie is so different. Just look at the body count of the first one compared to the second. Like, those feel like different movies, and, and it's split up right at the half point perfectly. Like, that's exactly where it should have been cut off. And, you know, I hesitate to put it I kind of want to put in a perfect boy. I hate to be the guy who puts the Tarantino movie in perfect boy. Just because, man, there's a stigma behind that. That's kind of like, oh, the film the film boy liked the Tarantino movie. But it's, yeah, you know what? It's not one of my favorite Tarantino movies. But again, when it comes to being a sequel, yeah, I think it nailed what it means to be a sequel. It captures enough of what the first movie did and does enough different stuff. And the thing was, it was always meant to be that way. Like, that movie was meant to exist. We were never supposed to get, well, I mean, I'm sure we would. If if, if it's successful, we get a Spider-Man 2. We get a How to Train Your Dragon 2. We get a Godfather Part 2, you know? We get all those because the first one is, like, successful. But this one just spoke, it's supposed to be one movie. And the second one is just, like, that's a realized vision that was always supposed to exist. And it's the same thing why Two Towers works. Um, again, not my favorite, but I do love Two Towers because it's supposed to be there. It is supposed to be there, you know, even though it is my... Anyways, so yeah, no, I'd say Kill Bill is a perfect boy when it comes to sequel. Um, and moving on, a more contemporary one, again, animation. Incredibles 2, really, really good boy. Um, builds off the sequel surprisingly well. And yeah, I just enjoy it quite a bit. And is, again, if you want to hear my thoughts on Incredibles 2, animated tier list, check it out. X2, the 21st movie on this tier list. We've got one left after this. Yeah, I'm going to say X2 makes it to Perfect Boy. It does. This is the one that's like unflinchingly Perfect Boy when it comes to a sequel. Because it builds off of the first one way better. And it, oh boy, it just, yeah, it just does a great job of, of uh, telling that story alkaline lake and wolverine hugh jackman patrick stewart magneto yeah no it's i it's my favorite x-men movie x2 check it out we're down to the last one folks this is it the 22nd film on this 2 22 22 tier list number 22 is 22 jump street <laughs> How many times can you say 22 average it's, we're ending on a bit of an average note it's an average boy it is um this one for me is fine. It's good. It's all right. It doesn't do anything too crazy. Um, it's I, I liked 21 Jump Street way more than I thought I would. And 22 Jump Street is a pretty interesting sequel. I think it adds to what 21 Jump Street was in a very interesting way. Um, and again, those movies, maybe it is Lord and Miller, um, but those movies have a really just interesting way of making me care. And I never expect that because it's not exactly the most highbrow movie, you know. But no, it's, 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 it's fun. It knows what it is. It has some goofy jokes. And yeah, for its time, it was one of, it's one of the better sequels that came out in general. So heck yeah, Average Boy. I guess that's it. I guess that's, that's all I have for my sequel week. 22, 22 on a Tuesday tier list.
thank you for watching. Uh, we're going to have hopefully more sequel-based content for sequel week. But I wanted to get this one out on, like, released on 2-22-22. So, happy Tuesday to all of you watching this on the day. Uh, you'll be hearing from me on Friday. And, uh, yeah. Yeah.